So how much was 2020 just an aberration in terms of a lot of companies' performance? Well, we'll find out in a few moments' time because the fully net loss over at Scheffler uh, RG was 424 million euros, following a net income of 428 million positive the previous year. Um, what else can I tell you? The fully operating earnings EBIT margin before special items, 6.4% versus 8.1% previously. Um, they say they're going to generate an EBIT margin before special items of 6 to 8% uh, in 2021. But I'm delighted to welcome Klaus Rosenfeld to the show. He's, of course, the CEO of Scheffler and joins us now. Klaus, well, there's my basic question. How much was 2020 the aberration? And can you and the industry recover despite supply chain issues elsewhere in the automobile industry? Well, good morning. 2020 was clearly a challenging year, but I think Scheffler coped well with the environment. Look at our fourth quarter. That was a particularly strong fourth quarter with growth above previous year. Uh, Q4 2019. So we are encouraged by that development and we also started well into the year 2021. Klaus, there's a school of thought out there, let's say the, the management consultancy industry and the investment banking industry that wants to split everything up. They want the fees from it, but they see value everywhere in the sum of the parts. I liked your comment. Uh, I think it was in the Süddeutsche Zeitung where you said splitting up for the sake of it is not a sound concept, even though stock markets occasionally find it appealing. Good rebuff there, sir. Do you want to expand upon that? Well, we have no plans to split up Scheffler. And uh, we like the diversification across our three divisions. The 6.4% margin um, on an adjusted basis for the full year 2020 is a result of the fact that we don't only have an automotive business, but a very strong industrial business that is performing well despite the crisis. So uh, we have no plans to split up. We have plans to even more look for synergistic potential across the divisions. Klaus, let's talk a little bit about that because there, there do look to be some interesting growth drivers out there, whether it's the migration to electric or whether it's the opportunity in emerging economies that have done better through the pandemic. Where do you see the real energy coming from in 2021? Well, first, let me say uh, we made great progress in 2020 on the e-mobility side. And electrification is, is an important trend. Uh, you know this from all our major OEMs. Uh, our order intake for the year in e-mobility was much better than expected. 2.7 billion speaks for itself. So we're happy at that front. If you now think about synergies, the whole electrification is a trend that doesn't stop in cars. It also goes into all sorts of other uh, applications. And that's where our industrial business plays a role. But more, more so, just think about the sustainability trend. Most people don't know that we are more or less in every second wind tower of the world with our wind business. Our wind business in 2020 grew by more than 30%. So Scheffler is participating not only in the automotive uh, area and the new uh, developments with the new opportunities, but also uh, on the sustainability side, we are very well positioned on the industrial side. Uh, and that comes on top, industrial automation, think about digitalization. There's a range of very promising growth fields, but we will also always maintain our foundation business, our mature business, and that makes it interesting we are, because we are doing well in the mature business and we're going for the new business, both in automotive, but also in industrial. 